Welcome to Kentuckiana Real Talk, hosted by Jeremy Ward. If you enjoy the podcast, please subscribe on the podcast provider of your choice and consider subscribing to the Jeremy Ward Team YouTube channel for more expert real estate insights. Now, let's start the show. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky and a Real Talk. Today, I'm here with an awesome agent, Seth McKim. How's it going? Uh, Seth started with me. Shoot, we were talking. It's been almost 10 years ago, something like that. But uh, he started with his lovely wife, Christina, and they now run the McKim team uh, with Ward Realty Services. Seth, appreciate you coming in and yeah, talking with pleasure. us today. Uh, market's a little different than when you started. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things are going a little quicker. Not uh, as much inventory. It's, uh, it, well, it seems like uh, it changes about every two to three weeks right now. Yeah. Over the last two years, it's been, you know, roller coaster. Definitely. Uh, but very different than when I started in. Christina was talking about this the other day, extremely different than when she started. So. Yeah, I can remember uh, when, when Christina and I were working together on the team, you know, listings weren't hard to find. Yeah. Uh, buyers weren't real hard to find, but things weren't moving as fast. There right. was no urgency. Right. Uh, the urgency came around with the low interest rates and COVID and all that, and it's really been a game changer for us. Um, you know, used to, you'd have 3,000 homes on the market. And that would be a balanced market. Anything over three thousand, it was a buyer's market. Mm -hmm. Anything under three thousand, as you know, seller's market. Yep. I looked at the uh, stats today, and there were six hundred and eighty-five homes available properties on the market in Southern Indiana, which is double from what we had in COVID. COVID, I seen yeah. it get down around yeah. three hundred. I remember that. Yeah. And that was that was rough. So yep. there is a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. We're still in a. Uh, huge seller's market, but uh, there is at least some inventory to look at. Um, I brought you in today, Seth, just to kind of uh, talk a little bit about real estate, of course, but just, is there any deals that we've worked together? There's any deal that you've worked here lately that, lately that really stands out to no. you as a realtor? A lot of people kind of want to know what's a day in the life as a realtor look like? What is some things that we see? Yeah, we sell houses. we we see land, but is there anything that's like stood stood out to you here recently? Mm -hmm. uh, th there is, but the day in the life of a realtor, um, I I love it. And the way I describe it is, um, well, back up a half a step. Your day can change in <laughs> in a heartbeat. Today it changed pretty quick. It did, <laughs> um, and that's that's fine. That's that's actually kind of the way I like it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think what prepared me for that or or why I'm so comfortable with that is just growing up on a farm. Yeah. You know, you can plan all you want, but if the cows get out. <laughs> You're chasing them. <laughs> you got to change your plans real fast because the cows aren't going to wait for you to get done with the other things you were going to do. So, um, you know, answer the call and do what needs to be done when it needs to be done is very natural to me. Yeah. Um, but uh, as far as uh, any deals that stand out, there's, there's, I could probably talk till the cows come on back home. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but I had uh, the, the pleasure of uh, serving a client, uh, a, a repeat a repeat client uh and he he sent me as this really tremendous heartfelt video of of himself leaving the house for the oh, last wow. time and uh you know it it, it really brought to, I don't know, brought to light, but reminded me of, you know, the emotion mm -hmm. that people and the sentiment that people develop for their house. It's not just a piece of property. Right. You know, it's not just sticks and mortar. It's, it's actually a family member. True. You know, yeah. you know, you, as a kid, you 
you know, home home means safety and yeah. and you know your your family and and stuff like that. But as you get older, you know, just just the confines of of the walls, you know, they're always going to be there no matter what's going on and stuff like that. And uh, I, I, excuse me, <laughs> I really appreciated getting that. Um, and being included kind of just in that moment. So um, so this was a client that had sold a, a home. Yeah, sold yeah a home he was a seller. Him. Yeah, And yeah. basically he, he just took the time to kind of reflect back on his time at his house. Yeah. And it uh, sounds like that was pretty emotional. It um, was. It, 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 heart, it, it, heartfelt. Uh, it was. It was extremely heartfelt. And, you know, it... Yeah, I'm I'm kind of, I'm an emotional person too, and try to uh, I guess I guess you try to society makes you try to play that down, you know, be logical and, and stuff like that. And I think maybe especially as a as a male, mm -hmm. you know, you're not supposed to be in touch with that or let that guide you but i think that uh it's important to keep those things in mind mm -hmm. maybe not let it control you but keep those things in mind and and as a realtor you know understand that the people that you're dealing with are going through these emotions right and and you know sometimes you just gotta just love them you know, just yeah. put your arm around them and say, hey, everything's going to be okay. Well, and that's, I think that's part of it is, is, you know, being a realtor, we've, we've seen the good side of owning homes. And unfortunately we've seen sometimes mm -hmm. people lose their homes. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe they're going through a short sale and, you know, there's more to our jobs than just sticking the sign in the yard. Oh yeah. You know, we, we become, uh, I won't say attached, but we, we develop relationships with these buyers and these sellers and mm -hmm. we get a, you know, and share the wins, you know, mm -hmm. when they get that first, that offer yeah. on their first home. And uh, sometimes we, you know, we get to share the, the emotions um, as we're going through the process of buying or selling. And, and it really becomes a kind of a family, you know, and it's, it's very nice when somebody includes you like, like this gentleman did yep. uh, to share his, his experience and, you know, walking out his home for the last time. And yeah. I can't imagine, I don't know the, the, the gentleman, but I'm sure there was a lot of memories, you know, and birthdays, yeah. and things that happened in that home that it, it is kind of hard to walk away from. Right. And then on the other side of that is the, the excitement of getting that new home and what kind of memories will we create here? You know, is this where my son will, graduate from high school and go yep. off to college, that sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. and, um, there's just a lot to, to this business. And, you know, I, I think for you and I, it's for us, it's really about the relationships and the people that we get to work with mm -hmm. that gratifies us. For sure. For sure. And, uh, you know, help helping. I know one of the things I learned I've I've done a lot of coaching, mm -hmm. and one of the things I learned when I started coaching um, was you know, it, there's a balance to tap into of emotional of of emotion when you're an athlete because mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that can be a major driving force in in your performance. Right. Right. Uh, but we've all seen athletes let that overcome them yeah. and they lose their head or cool and they do something stupid or they don't, even if they don't do something overtly dumb, you know, maybe it affects their play in a negative way right. and they make an error or, or something that they, you know, that they shouldn't have. So I can remember telling kids that I was coaching and it's like, look, you guys just go play the game. Don't be nervous. You're good at what we do. You just go do that. I'll, I'll be the one worrying. Yeah, let me take the worries. Right, and I think as a as a real estate agent, I can kind of mm -hmm. do the same thing. Yeah, like, hey, look, here's 
here's where we're at. Here's what we need to do. I'll take care of this and you, you don't need to worry about it. Yeah. So, um, for sure, that's a, that's a, a big part of what we do. It's just taking that, um, mental and or emotional burden off of, off of somebody and letting them just do what, what they, what they need to do. Right. And usually for us, it's just, you know, hey, we've got you. Yep. We know the playbook. Mm -hmm. This is how the plays are run. Right. This is what we need you to do. And mainly, we just need you to keep keep going to work. Yeah. You know, don't, don't <laughs> buy a car in <laughs> the process. <laughs> We've had that happen in the past, you know, and, and keep your, you know, your emotions to a point and let us, let mm -hmm. us wrestle the, yeah. the, 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 the hard part of the deal, you know. And, and one of the things that I always tell people is like, look, if something comes up and, and you need to, you know, th that's what I'm here for. If mm -hmm. things are getting chaotic for you, give me, give me a call. Yeah, absolutely. Like, so we can handle it and it probably won't be that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. But if, you know, if you let it, it will snowball and it will become a monster. Yeah, I mean, like, buying a house or buying your uh, family a home or if it's just your first home you're single it's your biggest purchase most likely uh, that you've made in your life and that that can become real emotional right. and, and, and these days we're talking about you know quarter a million half a million yeah, dollars easy just to start right right yeah. so it's a it's a big it's a, major it's a big deal <laughs> yeah it's a big major thing so it can be overwhelming on both ends of that well, and I think, just like you said, like we we go through the steps day in day out with these homes. Like you know, we're I don't know, Seth. You guys, I think sold sixty some places last year, mm -hmm. roughly. And you know, it it it's not the same plug and play deal every time. Like right. it's, when I worked at Ford, I knew what I was going to do. I was going to stand on this position on the line. I was going to put this part in every day, and it, it all went together the same way every day. But the difference with real estate is it's never the same. Like every deal has a little something different about it. You're dealing with different homes, different properties, different emotions, different style of clients, different wants. Yeah. And you're kind of the coach that's that's got to put that puzzle all together in a way that everybody comes out happy at the end. Mm -hmm. And it, it takes some skill, some patience, and and just you know being able to control them emotions. And it sounds like that's what you did for your client. And he was able to reflect back on his good time at his home, sent you a copy of it. Obviously, he thought a lot of you to, to do that. And then I assume you, you probably moved him into his to a new place. Uh, not yet. They're, they're building a new construction. So oh, it's nice. Gonna be, it's going to be a little bit before they get that done, but. Uh, yeah, that can be, that can be an emotional process, it is new construction. Process. <laughs> <laughs> My wife and I, we built our home and, um, we worked together pretty good and we had a contractor helping us, but I think by the end of it, we were both going, Hmm, are we going to get divorced by the time we get th <laughs> this house built or, or what? You know, we'd have the code enforcement come in and we thought we were going to get our uh, certificate of occupancy and nope, here's another five items on the list. And you know, I don't know why it's such a big deal why you're in that, but it's it is. It's the emotion, the weight, and the expense, and the debt, and everything that goes along with it that really triggers you. Like, like Holly and I wouldn't have had a problem, you know, working out punch lifts of four or five things, but when you add that whole eight months of building and all the money and, and time in it, it really gets to be an emotional thing. So it's good to, I would say it's really good to find a, an agent that you can trust. Uh, and build that relationship with for life and that you know when you you know when you call Seth or, or call your agent they're going to be there for you and help you kind of get through the muddy water find the actual point you know that needs to be focused on and get that done for sure. uh, rather than you know uh, as a you know as Holly and I were we didn't have an agent at the time to help us we were just freaking out mm -hmm. so it had been nice to have somebody to kind of stand in for us at that point I wasn't a real estate agent at, you know yet right so I can kind of see, you know, day to day, I see it like where we got to step in and just kind of lift that burden from people. Mm -hmm. And it feels good. You know, yeah, you, you got to sure. help them. For sure. I don't, um, I don't know. I know with Christina and I, we, we 
purchased a home, did massive amounts of renovations to it, thinking that we were going to live there for the next 40 years. And then uh, a year and a half later, we we changed plans. Well, so, let's, well I hear you say we. Yeah. I think Christina fell in love with another house. Yeah. But you were pretty in love with the farmhouse. <laughs> <laughs> That was your baby. Yeah, it was. I, I did love that house and, and property. But, um, you know, when uh, <laughs> it comes to decision making, you, yeah, <laughs> you have to <laughs> all be on the same page. And, um, you know, some some hands turn the pages more than others. But well, my wife says I may be the head of the house, but she's the Nick that turns it, right? right. So, you know, I, if mama's happy, everybody's happy. Yeah. But, you know, I, going back to that farmhouse you all did, that was amazing. Yeah, that, well, you you took uh, that from, from an old farmhouse to a very craftsman, special home that I think it made it made some pretty it uh, did. It, it publicity. Was, it, it got a lot of uh, traffic or it was pushed out and, and you know we obviously pushed it out to our normal places but then um we found out that it was being pushed out by other people even further and further and i you know i showed that house virtually to people in nevada no texas kidding. florida and i know other agents did the same thing so mm -hmm. now uh, it made it on like a historical homepage, didn't yeah, it yeah i think so yeah um I forget the name of the. I can't remember it either. Page, but it was it was uh, the love of old homes or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it did. Um, did you shed a few tears when you left that one? You know, I I didn't. Um, I didn't, and, and probably only because we were we were only there such a short time, and mm -hmm. it really, I mean, I put a lot of sweat into it, but um, you know, it's not like. That's where Daphne went, you know, had to prom right, you know, right. or anything like that. So, um, no, that one wasn't so emotional. Um, but uh, I, I still. That was more of a labor of love with the project. Yeah. Just yeah. bringing that back to life. Bringing it back and, you know, um, took taking it apart and then getting everything fixed and, and everything with it's probably the front side of that client's message right you know i'm envisioning these things happening and then not to be too dramatic but the the rug pulled out from under you when you're like oh, we're not gonna get to do that here right so um you had a lot more stuff you were ready to do to yeah the home. oh yeah there's there's you know, uh, I tell people all the time, you know, they, they'll ask me, what do you think it was going to cost to get this redone? I said, well, <laughs> you can spend as much money on it as you want. You could, you know, I, I could, I could spend the rest of my life working on it. Right. You know, um, how far do you want to go? There's no limit to it. Um, but yeah, we had some things, some vision for it that that we didn't get to to uh, see to fruition, and that's okay because uh, the next house we bought has as many or more projects to do on it. Yeah, uh, that's a nice place. You guys have been doing a lot with that home. Oh yeah, and you both, you and Christina, flip houses as well. Well, a couple a year probably. No, not not, uh, and it's just. I joke. I say, it's just something to do to stay busy, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, we we do probably two or three, maybe a year, and um, and obviously to make money. I mean, that's sure. I wouldn't I wouldn't do it for free. Uh, but part of it is is probably to be honest with you that. Um, joy and satisfaction of you know we're taking this run down jalopy <laughs> and and well pc i gotta be or pg i gotta be 
but, uh, this rundown, ratty old house and, and doing what we need to do and, and you know, envisioning uh, the, the, the next people in there, whether it's a family or, or, or what, but being that, you know, we have a family, that's usually how I see things. Um, you know, seeing, you know, birthday parties and different events and how, how they're going to enjoy this or they'll enjoy that or, you know, whether it's we decide to redo the shower and, and tile the wall and put in, uh, make sure there's a, a niche in there and, you know, just imagining people walking, in, oh, it's got a niche. Right. You know, just simple little things like that. Um, I know when we buy the homes, uh, to flip them or, or turn them into rentals it a lot of times it ends up being nicer than the home I live in because mm -hmm. I want everything to be you know perfect or better we're looking for places to take out walls like yeah. you said you know it'd be great if you take this wall out you could get a, a whole group of people in here or yeah. a family to enjoy holidays and you you get into that and you start you know tearing walls out and making things happen and you're like wait I got a budget I'm supposed to be staying yeah, on somewhere I need, to... <laughs> <laughs> I need to maybe pull back a little bit yeah 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 <laughs> And that's fun. I, and that part of it, I think, with Christine and I is fun because uh, we we see things from a different angle. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, our priorities are, are close to the same as far as what the, the end product should be. But... Um, you know how we go about that and what we do to what we do to get there is is different and i think that you know part of it is is that uh that wrestling match mm -hmm. to get there I, I i i do enjoy that process actually kind of negotiating with christina about yeah. how far we're going to take this what colors we're mm -hmm. going to put this here this is what we're doing and uh, it's always fun to get to the end and people, you know, Christina is walking people through the house and she talks about all the things that she did. Yeah. I picked that. I, that's, that's, I did that. And, okay. Seth, Seth really didn't do much. He's... <laughs> <laughs> I have heard stories of you like last minute punch with a, yeah. with a cutting in trim around the ceilings and just making sure everything's yeah. perfect. And... Yeah, I do. I, I, yeah. And she'll get on me that, you know, not everybody sees all the details you do, but I do. I see them, so I need to. You got to take care I of gotta, it. I can't let it go. Um, so it's a lot. I, I, I enjoy it immensely. And, uh, you know, we're not doing too bad at it either. No, you guys have had some really nice flips and. I like to say that the farmhouse was an awesome creation that you did and taking it from pretty rough kind of, we'll just yeah. say you polished a, a polished a turd, but you did more than that. Like well, it, it was a good turd to polish. <laughs> yeah. It had some good bones to it, yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it just, uh, I think, I think that house just had, uh, so much history that, I mean, whether, whether you actually found out the history of the house itself or not, but uh, you could just feel it. Mm -hmm. You know, it just it just had a, a curb appeal presence to it that, um, and it, you know, not just curb appeal, but you walked into the house and through the house, you could just feel, um, and that's to me just very romantic and mm -hmm. and uh, makes things feel like home. Well, it goes back to the story you told us in the beginning. When these houses are more than material, they're, yeah. you know, they're, uh, they're part of the family, mm -hmm. and you become attached to them. And, and especially if there's been a couple generations of your family there, yeah. that gets to be real interesting. It's it's pretty hard to let go of. I, I wish that I had a family farm or a family, you know, mm -hmm. place that we could go back to and, and add to it or improve yeah. it, you know, and. I think my family, you know, during the Depression, times got hard and they had to sell. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. so. Probably a common, common theme story, yeah. You know, the the sons went off to war and, mm -hmm. you know, it was rough. So, but, 
Yeah, I I, uh, I say the same thing, Seth. Like some of these homes will just they just really draw you in mm -hmm. more than others. It mm -hmm. just depends on the character and history and stuff. Right. Um, Isn't that weird? It is. I mean, we stop and think about it. We go in how many homes a day? We've mm -hmm. looked at thousands of homes over our career, and there's just some that are really just stand yeah, out to you. Yeah. yeah, I can remember a few that mm -hmm. I just wish I could have bought. I don't know what I would have done with them. Right. But they just, like, calling my name as soon as I walk through the door. Yeah. And I think that's kind of, you know, for our buyers out there, they, they kind of get that feeling when they for walk sure. in that home, like, this is the one. And, and that's a common common theme showing people houses is um, – it seems like for me, I show somebody maybe five or six, and then they start to be apologetic. I'm sorry for dragging you out. Don't be sorry. Right. I think this is the most fun you can have. Like, I I love this. Yeah. And, you know, every, to this day, and probably always and forever, the more houses I see, the better I'll be at what I do. So. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just going to go drive around and look at them by myself. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so, but the, the the analogy that I use is for the only thing that I can compare it to is I remember when Christine and I were getting married, and she was shopping for the wedding dress, mm -hmm. and. She calls me obsessive. This lady had catalogs, like like the old style Sears and Rope. You remember that mm -hmm. catalog you used to get oh, for yeah. Christmas every year and around Thanksgiving? Like, that was exciting. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> look at that until March and the pages were coming out. But um, uh, she had st stacks of catalogs and brochures and just, I don't know probably two, <laughs> two or three million pictures of uh, wedding dresses. And I can tell about four different styles. And other than that, they all look the same to me, mm -hmm. right? But, you know, she couldn't find one out of all those that she liked. And she started to get stressed. Like, oh, gosh, what am I going to do? I can't. By, and I remember being on the phone with her while she was at a dress shop. And she had looked at, I don't know, 10 or 12 to that point, tried them on. And the, I don't know what you call them, the sales person there, mm -hmm. helping her try dresses on, um, had gone back. She said, you know, I think I've, Got another one that you might like. And she, I, I was on the phone and I wasn't there, but I can see it, you know. Mm -hmm. She's on the phone with me and the lady brings the dress out. She goes, <gasps> just, just took her breath away. Yeah. And then we, <laughs> if we get back to the very beginning of this whole conversation, it's emotional. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And I tell people all the time, you, you walk into this house and if, you know, it depends on a, a person's situation. Sure. Right. Do they, is it, are uh, they looking for home or investment home, home? Right. Or, or is this, yeah. are you going to live here for two to five years or is this going to be 40 to 50 years? Right. right. Um, what, what's the situation? But when you walk in, if you walk into the house and, it doesn't do anything for you here. It's okay if it's not the one, right? right. But because it's not the one. But if we walk into that house and you <gasps> takes your breath away, guess what? This is probably the one. It, yeah, you know. So let's look at this one a little, a little harder, a little harder, a little more closely. What would be uh, a piece of advice you would give? Um, kind of on the same lines, like if you get that ah. Uh, like, what would you tell your buyer? Like, they say they want to make an offer in this house, and you know it's the one. How do you instruct mm -hmm. them to go about that? Well, it depends uh, on on the situation with with the listing, I guess. If it's day one on the market, okay. We'll, you know, we'll, it's not time for songs and dances. Mm -hmm. 
you know, you, this is what they want for it. This is probably where you need to start in this market. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. E even now. Um, and it depends on, I'll, I'll call and check. Are you getting a lot of traffic or, you know, are we the only showing today or, or what, uh, what's the situation? Try to get the full picture. Cause you know, I don't want to advise somebody to overpay for something that's, that's going to have one offer on it. So, um, uh, if it's been on the market for two months and you know, and you know, we might, we'll have a different strategy for sure. Um, and I'll tell people, look, I, I, I can tell that this is, this is tripping the triggers for you. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I like that. Um, but let's, let's slow down just a half a step here and let's, not let's not be too hasty let's right. let's get in the basement or crawl space or and look as close as we can before we go off and you know start order inspections and right right let's let's uh let's um i think the emotion needs to be there but let's not make an emotional decision, decision. right right, right. Uh, so it's, that's a it's a fine line, and you gotta you gotta be a little bit logical about that. Yeah, and like I, like we were saying earlier, every deal's different. Mm -hmm. Every home, oh, for sure. There's no cookie gutter home in my book. Well, and they you may know, look the same, but right. No two are the gonna same. be no two are gonna be alike. Um, you know, it's gonna depend too on the on the buyer. Like you know. And I will ask them a lot of times if it's an older home, what what's your risk aversion? Yeah, you know, mine's Scott. Yeah, I'm I will I'm I will roll the dice and I I will tackle something. Yeah, I will tear it apart and and put it back together if I have to. But uh, I I know and realize that not everybody's that way. Right. If you want a turnkey outfit, this you know. This one might not be the one. Right. So um, it, if you're looking for a project or, you know, this house may need, you know, just look at the age of it and it's going to need continual maintenance, not just maintenance, but you're going to have projects now and forever. Lots of love. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if you're good with that, I'm good with it. If you're not, then let's pump the brakes. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a common conversation that uh, I have with buyers. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want that to go unsaid a lot of times. Right. You know? right. I don't want you thinking you're getting a, a brand new home. Right. I mean, I know you know that, but if you've never owned an older home, then just heads there's a, up. Yeah, right. there's, it's yeah. a little different. You know, yeah, like, it is different. We know that, that you see and like all the good things that we can see, but mm -hmm. let's look at some of the things that maybe don't really jump out at us. But as you know, mm -hmm. working on homes, this is going to be maintenance. Yep. It's not going to go away. Right. This is going to need love in five years. This this may be good for another ten, but it's going to come up. Mm -hmm. And and I agree. And I think having that conversation so these three buyers they know what they're getting into because mm -hmm. that's the last thing we want is a, a video where you know they take a video instead of showing you all the good things yeah. about their house. They call and say, "Oh my gosh, look at this! And look at I had no idea that this was going to require you know maintenance every year." Mm -hmm. Uh, I didn't understand board and bees were going to eat my log cabin up. You know, mm -hmm. all these things that you and I see and deal with on reports all the time. Um, if you give your agent a, a chance to point those out to you and let him be honest with you, you know. Well, you know, two, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know everything. Mm -hmm. I can't, I don't have a full history of the house and, you know, know everything about every house I walk into by any means um so but um and i think that's 
I think that's something important to convey to a buyer too. It's like, hey, look, I, I don't know. Right. I, I don't know. <laughs> I've never had to deal with anything like that personally. So I don't know what that would take or entail or, you know, it might be easy. It might be something that you'd rather not get into. I, you know, I think that's. Eh. Sure, we can refer to an expert. Well, sure. And, and get them with the right people. But just kind of. I, I don't want to. I don't want to seem like that. Uh, I, I do know everything, but you know, it's like you said. I guess I can point you to somebody who yeah probably well, does and can take care of that. And I think with being agents, we see so many things. We know so much. You know, it's, I've heard a saying: "I forgot more than you know about real estate than." Mm -hmm. people know at, the, at times, you know, and I kind of joke about that, but really like we do, we are in the industry. We deal with houses every day. We've been through inspections. We've done flips. Sure. We've seen homes built like to the normal person. We kind of should be well and stand out as the expert. Now, like say, it doesn't mean we know everything, but usually if we don't know, we know where to find out. Yes. And and that's the good thing about it. If you, if you hire an agent, like, they can lead you down a, a path to home ownership and, and hopefully confidently mm -hmm. with the right contractors, the right inspectors, right. You know, even the right mortgage lender. Mm -hmm. um, these are things that we've got in our pockets that, that we know about that we can be, you know, bring value to the table more than just sticking a sign in the yard as some people say we do or that's all that we do. Mm -hmm. So it is a day in a life. Like there's a lot going on. There's a lot that you're seeing, a lot of advice been given and we just kind of take it for granted that that's part of our jobs. But I have had clients like you that, that, that reflect back and send you that video of what a great experience it mm -hmm. was to work with Seth McKim, mm -hmm. you know, and, and what it meant to them. And, uh, you know, even a man willing to have a few tears mm -hmm. in his video to another man, that, that says a lot. But, uh, Seth, I, it's always been a pleasure working with you, man. We've, we've had a, a good time over the last almost 10 years, we think. Uh, we know it's pushing 10 it's years. Like, I think it's eight, <laughs> eight, it's seven ten. and a half. It's close. I think it'll be eight this, this December. But, uh, you and your wife do a great job of, of taking care of their clients. Well, and... you know, I don't want to be too hard on Christina. She's, uh, she's a powerhouse and mm -hmm. you know, she's very, very good at, at what we do. And, um, kind of just a force of nature. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't want to be too hard. I'll be home in a minute. So, uh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know where to get those points. In too. <laughs> but, uh, no, you guys have done a great job over the years. I've watched you grow. You've, you've done it in a way that's respectful. It's, it's not just out here seeing how many homes you can sell, like you're loving your clients, you're, you're, you're friends with your clients. I see a lot of your all's clients appreciation parties. I see birthday parties of your daughters and your son and, and your clients are showing up with their kids. Like it's, it really is. You've got to, you've made a family business and have created relationships with your clients. Uh, and a lot of people speak very well of you in the area. Uh, with both of us being from Harrison County, Indiana, it's a small network. So I hear a lot of good compliments on you guys and as being your broker, that's a good thing. Yeah. So I appreciate all your hard work, Seth, and coming in and sharing a few of the stories uh, with us today. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, getting you back on here again, maybe with Christina. Yeah. I'll and see, uh, see if we can handle you both at one time. I doubt it. it it'll be a handful. <laughs> we'll probably be able to do it. Yeah. You know, but uh, I just wanted to thank everybody for watching today. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the Jeremy Ward team on YouTube for more local real estate info.